Good morning, everyone. I'm John Mark Young, Chief Investment Officer with Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers, and we would like to welcome you to our first installment of the Whitaker Myers Wealth Managers, What We Learned in the Markets This Week video. Our aim is to provide you, our value clients, with a brief video giving you information that is helpful to your understanding of the markets while also drowning out the agenda of the news media in America. So let's kind of think about the markets this year. U.S. and global equity markets are down sharply on the year, and that's due to many of the macro uncertainties that are taking place around the world right now. These uncertainties do not mean that all things are necessarily bad, and many of the positives can be taken away, ranging from things like a strong U.S. labor market to a growing market's consensus about federal rate policy. So what we want to do is give you four reasons or four things to think about in the market, three positive and one that we don't like. First, job openings hit a new record last month at 11.5 million available open positions. This would not be happening if companies were worried about either the economy or their future earnings power. Companies are continuing to hire like their future is still bright and wage growth is really solid. In addition, the current unemployment rate is 3.6 and this is really, really close to the pre-pandemic low of 3.5%. Point number two that we really like is this week we were able to see long-term real U.S. interest rates be positive again after being negative for the last two years. May 10th rate of 0.3 may not seem like very much, but the last time it was this high was July of 2019. So two things on that. Negative rates may be desirable for a short period of time as they spur investments and spending. However, positive real interest rates are the foundation to a properly functioning capital market. And secondly, on interest rates, although the transition to positive real rates can be painful, and we all know this right now, uh, it quickly increases nominal interest rates, and that is a necessary part of returning the cost of risk-free capital to a sustainable rate. Fortunately, we're through the bulk of that process right now, though. The third point, Wednesday's consumer price index that came out this week was slightly worse than expected, but it is still better than last month. Looking back at the 1970 to 1985 period, we're able to see that gas prices and overall turning points in inflation share a strong correlation. So far, gas inflation's peaked in November. As long as that remains at current levels, headline inflation should be peaking right about now. And fourthly, and this is the not so good news, on Wednesday, we saw Apple stock begin to break down. Apple has been the one safe haven in the current U.S. global equity market. Seeing Apple weaken with no news coverage, really, that is not a good sign for the broader markets. And this slide in Apple is part of you know, a larger trend of risk aversion amongst investors. Apple's move on Wednesday is another reason why we should remain cautious with stocks, why you shouldn't invest money that you need in the short term, but long-term money, retirement money, it's all going to be okay. You just got to kind of ride the wave. So hopefully these four points were helpful to you. As we think about the markets, we, your advisors, are constantly here to be able to help educate, teach, and inform you what's going on and apply a lot of this to your specific situation. So feel free to reach out to us. Hopefully this video was helpful. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks.